Welcome to Talking Sense. This is not Carlos this time. This is Michael Boddicker. And as a way of introduction, I'm not going to say any credits, but I'm going to say if you've heard music or watched a movie in your life, you've heard Michael Boddicker's playing. Is well, there was a really good period of about 25 years where I worked on a lot of records and a lot of films, a lot of advertising as well. Yeah. It's a, there was a great period of the music industry in the mid 70s through uh, the beginning of the 90s, where we actually had a system uh, that allowed for money to be made by the music makers. And uh, yeah, that during crazy. that during that period, uh, when we had budgets and stuff, uh, you know, we had big orchestras working all the time, and uh, lots of uh, rhythm sections working all the time, and individual people uh, that were working all the time doing overdubs, and a lot of arrangers and a lot of composers, and and it's it's changed, but yeah, I had a good run, a really good run, and, and now. Uh, the, the hard part is to make sure that we don't get lost in what was and continue doing what is and what will be. And, and uh, you know, this is part of it. This Zoom, ha having the Zoom business. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, my whole life is on Zoom these days. <laughs> I'm on Zoom with Sweden, on Zoom with Berlin, uh, with Australia. We just have all over the world, uh, uh, Tokyo. Uh, and uh, we spend all of our time doing that and sending audio files uh, via Dropbox and stuff instead of being able to sit in a room with somebody and play and actually see if there's a physical reaction. Yeah. You know, that's a, that's, that's, if, if anybody watching this has seen the SCL Awards, what's happening on, on the award show is we ask the composer uh, a whole bunch of composers, Academy Award winning composers, uh, uh, what, when do you know when a piece of music is finished? And, and they have to say, when I finish. Used to be, literally, I could write a piece of advertising on a Tuesday and turn it in the following Tuesday and on s the following Saturday. So within about 10, 11 days, I could go and sit in a movie theater and I could watch the audience react to it. Wow. You know, hard to do on Zoom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it's it's different. We we we've had a good run though. I'm very grateful. Yeah, but you're still running. I mean, we're oh, we're oh here yeah, in we're still running. Studio. We're still, yeah, we're and and we had uh, Chris Bowers here yesterday playing for uh, Terrence Blanchard. And Terrence Blanchard sent me his trumpet tracks within an hour after we finished the basic track with Chris Bowers. And it's just you know, yeah, it's just different. It's different. Yeah, you, you adapt. Yeah. Yes, we do. But, yes, but you used the word retiring, but while we were chatting a minute, you don't look a bit retired. You're, oh, you're, no, you're no. Still cranking I, it out. <laughs> my, my wife tells me that there's no place in the Bible where anybody retired, ever. Right. <laughs> so yeah. they, just, they just grow old, have more children, and raise more flocks. <laughs> and so here I am flocking it out. So, so one of the things that I most admired about you when, when I was younger and playing keyboards and you were doing Michael Jackson and all that kind of stuff, you always nailed the sounds. You always got things exactly the way they ought to be. And I think you're you're really a programmer in addition to a player. Um, I always and, fought and so, that. I always fought that because people thought that that was uh, an engineering job. And, and I have just immeasurable respect for engineers. Uh, you know, triple E's, uh, you know, people like yourself who repair synthesizers. I mean, you're the lifeblood. It, with, without you having uh, that service there, we would not be able to function as musicians. Uh, and, and what makes you great at it is because you're a musician as well, and you understand, you get it. Um, and you get the, what, what most engineers in computer sense don't get is that anything that takes you out of, I want to do this musically. Mm -hmm. And right. if you have to go, okay, now I'm going to pull down a menu. I'm going to search through 85 names. Okay. This one, click, 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 wait. Okay. All right. Gone. It's gone. Yeah. It's gone. Yeah. The, 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 the music making process 
can be as simplified as I sit at the piano, I close my eyes, I listen to what's going on in my head, and I play. We haven't gotten computerized music there yet, yeah. and it needs to be. The engineers who are doing it need to be musicians who understand that it has to be invisible. Uh, and um, the programming part was always something I fought because people would think that, oh, you're not a musician. And I came into town not as a synthesizer guy. I came into town as a songwriter who had played synthesizer on my song demos, and people started going, <laughs> Hey, can you play synthesizer on my demo? And and then those people went from being publishing people to being heads of record companies, and they hired me to do stuff. And uh, it was the programming aspect. If you don't understand the music aspect, it's like being an interpreter, right? So well, you remember, you kids maybe watching this who are twenty and thirty years old might not know that. 25, 30 years ago, people were still writing with pencils. Remember, what it's, it's a piece of wood with a lead in the middle. It's a pencil and a piece of paper, not doing everything on a computer. Uh, and and they, uh, they were trained in classical orchestration. And what had to happen is somebody had to come in to be able to interpret what they wanted mm -hmm. and, and be able to take classical orchestration and and move it to what's a possible with electronics. So John Barry, for instance, and I know I've told this story before, but John Barry, for instance, would just write a squiggle line over the top of a chart and and it would say eerie. And I'd have to go to the first violin, I have to look at what the first violin's playing, and I have to look over there at the, what the brass are doing, and I'd have to interpret what would fit. Because you just, uh, well, I didn't feel like I could just go, okay, whee, over the whole thing, blanket. And, and you you're know. talking about interpreting on the synthesizer. Interpreting, oh, absolutely. Yes. That's what I, okay. yeah, that's, yeah, that was my axe. I, I was blessed enough to be first chair synthesizer here for about 25 years. And, and it was, it's, it was very rewarding. I got to play with the best musicians ever, the best musicians, people who, you know, they, they, at that point, you, you're playing your instrument uh, in a recording situation six, nine, 12 hours a day, seven days a week uh, for, you know, 17 years straight. The, the level of expertise was yeah. incredible. It wasn't like it was, gee, I've never been in the studio before, but here, let me play. It was like, oh, yeah, I know this. I've been under the same situation. It's been three till nine o'clock, or three till midnight, rather, and I've got 100 musicians sitting there, and I have to play my, per my solo perfectly, and no, no sweat, no problem. I just do it. You know, to Tommy Tedesco's, Tim Mays, uh, those, you know, Dennis Budimir's, those type of musicians, yeah. um, Vince DeRosa's, uh, Malcolm McNabb's, uh, Luis de Tullio's, uh, you know, those, those phenomenal soloists who were continually red light on, high pressure situation, this is gonna live forever on screen or live forever on re uh, record, and it's got to be perfect the first time you do it, and they no come problem. through. No yeah. problem. No problem. That's what I do all day long. That's that's their attitude was. I, I do that all day long. Wow. So and and the difference for me in that is, is that their instrument, the violin, when Sid Sharp would pick it up to play on a record date, it made the same sound it always made when he was four years old and started playing it. Mm -hmm. My synthesizer every day, I had to reinvent it. You know, again, in the day that uh, that I started doing it, we had no presets. We didn't have presets until the uh, early 80s, Yeah. you know, uh, and, and we just take um, uh, an analog synthesizer and turn the knobs and interpret it. And you talked about being a programming, you, you thought I always dialed in the sound, which thank you, that's very kind. Uh, you know, uh, there were always remarks made about how long it takes to get to that point where it's dialed in perfectly, but uh, the, and whether or not it needs to change, because, you know, to, to do a filter, whop, 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 and have an, uh, an envelope generator that's going, dong, 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 at the beginning of it, and being able to change, change it while it performs, it's always shifting. 
it is a performance. Mm -hmm. The uh, people, people think, oh, no, no, just set up a sound and let me play ding, 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 ding. And that's not the way a synthesizer ought to be played. It ought to be played like a guitar where it has inflections and slides and bends and, mm -hmm. and you know, uh, and in order to get all that, you have to spend some time and you have to continue to manipulate while it's being performed. And uh, then when you have to invent your instrument every day, the key point that I think made a difference in my career was that I did it with the track. Now, people who have designed most computer synthesizers don't allow you to manipulate things while the computer is going. Used to be, if, if, if I wanted to patch something or turn a knob or do whatever, I could do it while the track was going. And I could see. I didn't have to stop the track make the adjustment, then roll the track, and then see, I could build while the track was going. And that was, I think, a key to my success. I had other people who always used headphones. Repatching like patch cables. Repatching, during, during the... turning knobs, patching uh, cables, uh, changing uh, the, the amount of instruments playing, changing the octaves of the instruments playing. You know, again, in the day that, that I'm talking about, that you're talking about, mm -hmm. that era of, of great music in Los Angeles, uh, uh, I had at least 60 synthesizers that were up and running on a rig, right? And I could take my finger and go across a MIDI patcher and have all of them come up. Oh, I want to change the, the controller keyboard, and they're all changed. I didn't have to pull down a menu. I didn't have to build four tracks with eight instruments each on them, you know, it's that's insane. We're starting to get to there. You're seeing people build programs that have stacks of instruments in them that you can save those stacks of instruments. So you say a, a string sound mm -hmm. might take, I once had on Milo and Otis, I had 127 instruments playing live off of a MIDI cable, off of a, a Mac SE, <laughs> right? And, and, uh, off the little green screen like yeah, that. Yeah. And uh, you, that ability, since it's moved to the box, has pretty much gone away. Unless you're a guy who sets up five PCs and then has all these templates that some assistant sets up for mm -hmm. you, it's not possible to create on the fly as easily. Now, you know, you look at Hans Zimmer, he's phenomenal. And, and, but he's got an army that does this stuff with him. And he can, he can imagine things and go, you know, here. And he builds things from scratch. He's phenomenal. And a pheno he was always a phenomenally gifted synthesis. Um, for me in that day, uh, I would have to, I, I would listen on the headphones and listen to the music and, uh, manipulate to the music. So even if I wasn't through the speakers, I was still building in relation to the music, not building outside the music, then throwing it against the music, right. which is what the point I was trying to get to is I had other people that, uh, uh, and not, they had phenomenal success in their own right but that would, would work all the time in the headphones by themselves and then they'd place the whole piece of music against the track mm -hmm. and sometimes it fit and sometimes it didn't and 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 most of the time it kind of like stuck out as its own piece of music and then came back yeah, and you. and <clears throat> my my approach was always no i'm a member of a band and that's that's been my approach in life i want to be a member of a band it's well don't you want to yeah, just go by yourself and do this no i, I don't want to do that i want to be i want to be with three other guys i want to be with ringo george and paul in the room <laughs> and i want uh, you know interaction, uh, yeah. uh, interaction yeah. play back and forth go oh hey 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 listen to this line could you play that that was like the yeah. the golden era of the gold star days and dave gold studio and uh, the Wrecking Crew, they, they you know, th if you look at those pictures, the amplifiers are right here. Everybody heard what w everybody was playing and they traded parts and, and say, hey, I got this baritone guitar here, check this out. Oh no, Glenn Campbell, you play it. Mm -hmm. and, 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 uh, and Carol Kay, who was a guitar player, would pick up the bass and play. And, uh, you know, Leon, <laughs> you, just, <laughs> you just go, uh, for me, 
That's the juice. Yeah. Still is the juice. Yeah. This being here with you, Sam. I know we're closer than six feet. We're not supposed to be, but but we're closer than six feet for me to be with you in a room and be talking about music and talking about what's possible, what was, but what's going to be possible, because it's going to be possible. Yeah. We're going to get electronic music back to the place where it actually makes sense for musicians instead of for engineers. Yeah, exactly. And, and again, I don't mean bad engineers. I mean the people who have the brains that can wrap their head around code, which is great. But, but not if, necessarily music. Well, yeah, if they don't if they don't have musical training, then they should be doing that for somebody else. Yeah. You know, I, we we got to get the musicians in there designing this stuff for musicians and and understanding really what it is that we do, not going, "Oh, I I have a a song that I'm writing. I can play a piano part." I mean, you know, it, it, any intro on any uh, any piece of music now has got more than just a piano part on that piano part, you yeah. know, and, and whether or not it has to happen post the playing of the part where you redo and redo and redo and redo until you get something right or uh, get something that you like and fits or whether or not it could actually happen. No, that's live. I, I, I had a guy here, Johnny Dade from the Snow Patrol. Mm hmm. We had, uh, one day we had uh, Ed Sheeran and uh, uh, Foy Vance here in the studio. And Johnny Dade from the Snow Patrol showed up and he had on an iPad, he had said, I spent all this time in my hotel room by myself. He said, and he built his own instrument. And he could, while he was playing, he could shift between instrument, instruments smoothly. He built it in, in um, uh, what's the ear cam? Uh, uh, the ear cam program. Uh, ah, anyway, the ear cam program, uh, uh, I R C A M program out of Paris. Uh, it was Pierre Boulez's uh, organization. And now that he's passed, they're still doing stuff. He took and he built on an iPad, he built layers of all the instruments he liked with all the effects that he liked, with all, uh, with all the reverb and echo that he liked, so that he could take and smoothly transition instruments or stack instruments, and it was all laid out in a really cool graphical order. Hmm. And, and, you know, more people like Johnny Dade writing code for us would be great. Yeah, so it was yeah. very musical. How oh, did. oh yeah. he, he, he would do every take and every take the instruments flowed smoothly from one another and it was like he was doing multi overdubs live. It was, wow. it was absolutely brilliant. Hmm. Absolutely brilliant. So anyway. So, so, so when you play, how much of it is notes and how much of it is knobs or exp other forms of expression? There's no, there's no no difference. It's got it's got to be both. That's all a, all of both. It's got to be all all of both. Yeah. Uh, it it's not a piano, and that that is you know I always experience that. Whenever say we'd be, be on a, a session and you'd have people who are trained piano players, phenomenal piano players with repertoires and experience, mm -hmm. all this, and they'd be asked to play uh, a B three. It's totally different, isn't it? Oh, totally different. I've to been there. <laughs> yeah, totally different. So, so you put them on a synthesizer, and again, these uh, most people who are trained classically on a keyboard, again, it makes the same noise mm -hmm. every day. Yeah. And uh, yes, there are different playing styles, different playing techniques, and and a, a pedal, <laughs> mm -hmm. two or th two pedals. <laughs> The, usually only one of them used, but three pedals <clears throat> on the piano, and you can change it. Uh, you can reach up and, and dampen the string, uh, but it's still the, generally the same noise. Yeah. When, when uh, you play a synthesizer and you're creating, and even in the old day, you had to even take into effect that there was a delay. So in the emulator, when you put in a sound that had a slower attack on it, mm -hmm. you'd have to anticipate, sure. like a pipe organist, yeah. where the groove was going to be so that you're at, the sound is actually playing like it's in time. But you're playing way ahead. Yeah, you can't quantize that. <laughs> you, know, you can't quantize it. That's yeah. exactly right, Sam. Yeah. Uh, and... 
Um, sorry. So we, I know I go, I go off on these tangents. I'm oh, so, I love music and I love synthesizers that's and what I it's just, about. I, I love uh, what we can accomplish with them. But there is no difference to me. If if there's a sound, it's got to be playable. And in order for it to be playable, you kind of have to know what part you're going to play. That's an, that's another issue that we can talk about. And again, I'm sorry if I repeat myself, but most people who buy synthesizers want the sound to play on all 88 notes of the keyboard, right? And and that's not the way sounds work. Oboes do not play on all right. 88 notes of the keyboard. Yeah. You have to, yeah, you can switch over to a bassoon at the low end, but and maybe whatever, a penny whistle or whatever at the top, but you can't, you can't, uh, that's, it's not realistic the way right. music works. If I, if I used to get a sound and it would work on, uh, uh, da 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 -da 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 -da. It worked in one range of the keyboard within, usually within less than an octave, and the sound sounded good there, and I make up a part and play the part. Most of the, you know, you think about it, music is so simple. Dun 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 You got eight notes. Do you ever take that oboe sound that shouldn't be played down there and play it down there just for oh, uh, extra yeah, effect? all the time. Yeah. All the time. Uh, make make something new out of it. Yeah, right? you know, uh, again on the like on it was actually I think the sound designer got I just learned the sound designer on uh, Hunt for Red October got an Academy mm -hmm. Award and what he had done is take one of my sounds out of the musical track the conk conk and, and uh, uh, that and he cut it out of the track and used it all over the film hmm. uh, and and that was just like bloom bloom big on the music paper and I had taken. Uh, uh, Grand Casas and uh, put them down two octaves, taking a piano, uh, remember the MKS-20, those rolling pianos? Right, right. Take it, that sounds great down two octaves mm. from where it's supposed to be played. And, and uh, you know, uh, times, 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 times with with like a, 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 a box of junk being dropped, like a hairy parch kind of sound, yeah, yeah. you know, just a <laughs> and, and And I take, e there were 11 sounds on that. You know, you stack them up, and again, like I, I did it with an orchestra. With okay, all right, everybody, we're gonna roll for a take. You know, like that. I have time to pull down menus yeah. and do this. You're pushing buttons like this and reaching and turning knobs and sitting there and playing your part, just like a guy who picks up his violin or his mm -hmm. flute, her flute, and and plays, sorry to be sexist in that, no, no offense <laughs> meant to anybody. You know, I just happen to be blessed to work with Louise de Tullio all the time. And she, on those John Barry things, you go back and you listen to those film scores. Yeah, it's that singular flute, which just fill up the entire scoring stage. Right. It's just, yeah. she was just fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, the, uh, it's, it was, it was, it is, we're getting there, we're inching forward. Uh, people are starting to understand that uh, a millisecond delay is not acceptable, you know? I used to sit with Jeff Picaro in a room and, uh, and, and move a sequencer with a Dr. Click, uh, uh, you know, in the, uh, in the Russian Dragon, mm -hmm. and you could move it uh, because you delay the click one beat so you could put things ahead right. and and you would uh, I, he could hear a half he could hear a half a millisecond if I changed it a half a millisecond he could hear it he could tell whether mm -hmm. it felt in the pocket ahead of the pocket behind the pocket and a half millisecond and and we get into engineers who think oh it can shift you can play a sound and it could be seven to eleven milliseconds varying. You know, which, oh, you can't hear that, Michael. Yeah, but I can feel it. Everybody can feel it. Yeah, there's a lot of perception issues. Oh, and it's incredible. I, Carlos and I were talking before we came, and he said, well, ask him about perception stuff. And it reminded me of something that uh, the late Rupert Neve said that really fascinated me. He, he talked about sounds that were so high that, you know, they're way above 20K, so you couldn't hear them. But when they interact, you could perceive things from that interaction 
And so it was important to have those frequencies. Dennis Sands, one of the greatest mixers we've ever had in LA, still, he uses an analog console. He uses a digitally controlled analog console. Mm -hmm. He won't go to an all digital console because they brick wall it at 20K. Right. He still wants all the air of all the instruments. And, and he's even mixing Atmos through an analog console. And, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's true. The, those things, those things do affect us. Uh, my old uh, ATR machines used to go out to 80k flat wow. before they started to drop off. Wow. So you people wonder why did that music sound so good? Why did it feel so good? Whatever in that era, we, we weren't we weren't dealing in MP3s. And, yeah. and although it makes it easier, you know, for people to transfer music or have it on an iPhone or do sure. whatever, uh, but there, there is a, percep a perceived uh, emotional response. There is an emotional response to music that has all the care of being full, full, rich, mm. real, as though you were sitting in the room with an instrument instead of having it lopped off. You know, and, and and lopped off on the bottom too, where you feel compression in your chest and stuff. I mean, you know, just people don't know that. I mean, I used to do a thing for kids uh, where kindergarten to second grade would go for a friend of mine who was a music teacher, and we'd go and oh, we had a flute player, saxophone player, trumpet player, drummer. These kids had never seen a real trumpet before. At seven to nine years old, they'd never seen a trumpet. <laughs> I, I can't even imagine it, but <laughs> seven to nine years old, never seen a trumpet, surprised at all the different things it could do. You know, it's just it's not a sample like da or da 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 not like that, but like making it whinny, making it talk, mm -hmm. ma making it you know laugh, all the things you can do. You, I, I'm working on this thing with Terrence Blanchard. Oh my word, he, it. You can't play it on a synth. You can't play it on a keyboard. Right, right. He bends. He he comes into it. He bends up to the note slowly. He falls off of the note. He twists and turns and slides between, and and that's a real instrument. Yeah, and, and, and being intimate with that instrument and knowing it so well. Yeah, he's, he's just fabulous. And and when you're in the room, and you can feel. All of the, you know, e even like I said, the compression, even the low end, the thump, you're not going to get it over your phone. You're yeah. not going to get it. I feel sorry for my daughter who grew up listening to MP3s and. <laughs> your daughter didn't, didn't take out your old record player and put oh, it in a room? You, you know, I, I could go in my studio and, and put on like Steely Dan Asia record or something, <sighs> one of those that is so well recorded, and just play it. And, and it'll bring tears to my eyes. It just sounds so good. Oh, yeah. and, and then the kids are used to hearing MP3s, and it's like, oh, I feel sorry for you. And they cared so much in those days. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's Roger Nichols. Yeah. 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 Uh, and Roger Nichols was just. You know, the, the amount of effort he put into making those records pristine. And Donald Fagan, too. And Donald, oh, yes, <laughs> yeah. Legendary. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and Walter Becker. Yeah. Come on, that was a team. They yeah. had a team of guys. It was phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. So uh, what else? What can we talk about, Sam? We could talk for days and days, but I, I know so. you got to get back to work. And oh, it's boy. probably time for us to wrap up. So I'm so grateful for you doing this because I know you're really busy right now. It's uh, it, it's a very busy time, and I have to focus. Like I got, I was I was on with Berlin with Hilda Gudna daughter, who is just phenomenal at nine a.m. and I was still here working on Terrence and you know cutting the the oofs and the laughs and stuff out of Terrence Blanchard, so that when he plays against <laughs> Spike Lee, you can still hear what Spike Lee's playing and, and back and forth. And uh, that was at one thirty, and it's just going to be that oh, way geez. for a few days. And and it is what it is. I, I I I still I love this. I love what I do. I, I love I, music. I love, I love hearing love how you say that too. <laughs> uh, I, it it I comes just, across as we've been so you know, blessed. Yeah. We've been so blessed to be able to Sam yeah. in our lifetime to be in this period. Uh, you know it it is a people thing. Yeah. And and 
uh, your, the service that you provide to kids and people over, over the uh, over these videos is phenomenal. And and you what you're doing helping them move past. I'm by myself in a room, and I have that's what I know. As opposed to when I grew up, you know. I'm playing with even sometimes 115 of the best musicians in the world. Yeah, it's, it's all day long, isn't it? and you have you know you get interaction. You learn different things from different people, and you see how they handle different situations. Even whether it's phone calls or dealing with my child broke their leg, uh, you know, uh, in the middle of a, a, a recording session, you just you you watch, you learn. When you're by yourself in a room, it's hard. It, it, you're helping bridge that gap. And thank and you very you much. You are as well. Thanks so much. Thank you, Michael. All right, Sam. God bless. Good to see you, man. All right. Thanks. And uh, if you like what you're seeing, press that subscribe button right down there. Thanks, everyone. We'll mod you later. <laughs>